Hello everyone. My name is Brother Joe Rick Desparza. I'm a minister of the gospel and we welcome you here today at Abundant Grace Church. Today, this sermon, everything is all about God. All the glory goes to God. We recommend taking notes today as we will provide contact information at the end of the sermon and we would love to hear from you. And we will have an invitation for the altar call at the end of this sermon so you can begin this new life, this life in Christ to have peace, joy, understanding, love, unbelievable. Today's sermon title is Sin Shall No Longer Be Your Master. It's going to come out of Romans 6, chapter 6, verse 11 through 23. And I'm going to reference to Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 2. As we will be coming from the book of Romans, this epistle of Paul to the Romans was written from the city of Corinth about A.D. 56. Paul was writing to a predominantly Gentile audience. His main concerns in writing the book of Romans were to educate the believers in the basic doctrines related to salvation. The basic doctrines. When you hear the word doctrine, don't be afraid. Doctrines just means teachings. So it's to educate the believers in the basic doctrines, teachings related to salvation. To help them understand the unbelief of the Jews and how, how the, they benefited from it. And explain general principles of the Christian life that he has wanted them to comprehend and put into practice. So let's begin with chapter 6, verse 11 through 14. It reads, in the same way, I'm going to be coming out of the NIV. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of, weak, of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of his righteousness. Chapter 4, uh, verse 14. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. It is the freedom of, it is the freedom of sin's tyranny the freedom from sin's tyranny that we shall focus on today. Sin leads to habits. Keep doing it long enough and you'll become, to, you'll become numb to the Holy Spirit's conviction. You keep dipping into sin and thinking there's no consequences. Eventually, the Holy Spirit doesn't convict you. You become numb to it. That's, that's a point of, it's time to fear right there. Mm -hmm. Number two, sin leads to death. Romans 6 verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. Keep doing it long enough, and after it becomes a habit, it will eventually kill you. Sin starts small. It enters as a thought, but you have a choice. Now is the time to change masters and be set free from sin and become slaves of God. Amen. You know, we, in all areas in our lives, there are weak points, and that is where the devil attacks. As Bishop Ramon de Maria, our pastor here at Abundant Grace Church, emphasizes over and over and over of how we need to read the Word of God in order to know what it says. Trust me, you can listen to sermons over and over and over, but when you're spending time reading the God-breathed Word of the Lord, thus spending time with Him, He will personally speak to you on your level 
And you can't pick this up anywhere else. Amen. Now, don't take me wrong. S listening to sermons are great. I listen to sermons. I are some great pastors here in Dallas Fort Worth and in the U.S. I mean, great, great pastors. And I love listening to their sermons on the internet or on TV. But I'm just trying to say that spending personal time with God is more important. Yeah. Building your relationship with God, that is more important. Finding yeah. time, whether you're an AM person or a PM person. I'm an AM person. That is when I find my time with God. But you know what? I still try to find time with Him in the PM because I just can't get enough. <laughs> I love the Lord. But I'm going to make three major points. And I'm going to support them with the scripture. So point number one. Whomever you obey, you serve. Amen. Look what it says in Romans chapter 6 verse 15 through 18. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Look at Paul's answer. By no means. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves in sin, you have become, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have now, you have been set from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. You know, I was going to mention this story about high school, when I was in high school, and I remember looking out the window, and I would see the, the football team practicing down below, and um, I would look, and I, was, I remember this one time, I just said, you know what, I see them running up them hills, come back doing push-ups and sit-ups and some more exercising, then hitting them hills again. I said, you know what, I can do that. That looks pretty easy. Well, I joined. <laughs> I joined. And sure enough, that first day, I was running. I was ahead of everybody. And finally, <laughs> that was the first day, or the first, I can say the first hour. Not the day, the first hour. By the end of that, I was the last in line. <laughs> and struggling. I mean, just exhausted, exhausted just tired just had i mean that was it my knees just buckled down couldn't breathe <laughs> and man that's i just couldn't go no more that was it and that was my point of exhaustion but you know what god lets you get to that point of exhaustion so you can come to him he lets you he will let you wear yourself down. <laughs> and I am one. I am here to testi be, testify on that. But you know what? You'll have a choice. You'll have a choice to make. It's just like these videos that I see nowadays, these workout videos. You know, they look easy. On TV, boy, that supermodel on TV could be you. All the muscles and everything showing. But boy, once you, once you buy that video, try it for the first 10 minutes, you're exhausted. You're ready to give out. And that's the point where God lets you come to. The point of exhaustion. So you know what? So you can turn to Him. So you can say, Father, I can't go no more. I'm tried it. And I cannot go anymore. Now, you know what? I've tried it my way. I'm going to try it your way. There is no in-between when it comes down to serving God. When it comes down to, 
to serving God, there is no in-between. You're either on the left side of the fence or the right side of the fence. There's no standing on the pole in the middle. Either you serve God or you serve Satan. Serve the world and go to hell. Serve the Lord and enter the gates of heaven. Because you cannot serve two masters. God does not share his glory with no one. It's all about him. Our God is a righteous, jealous God. But I tell you this. His love for you, for me, is on a scale that cannot be measured. It's an immense love. Which brings me to point number two. We have been justified through faith. If we look to the reference verse in Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 2, it says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which, in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. You know, I was watching uh, about three weeks ago a special that was on TV. And there was this daredevil acrobat who was going to walk a wire along the Grand Canyon. I think they called it the Sky Wire. Mm -hmm. So you can Google it and look at that. It's very interesting. The guy was a Christian man. Uh, I know he said Jesus several times while he was on that rope. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? He was without a safety harness. He just had one of those balancing bars. And this wire stretched 14, over 1,400 feet. It was longer than, I believe, four football fields, about a quarter of a mile. And to the bottom of the gorge... 1,500 feet, about the, the height of the Empire State Building in New York. That's a long drop. You know, and as I watched this, I started thinking about how it is to enter into the glory of God, about entering heaven, about how God says, you know, there's a narrow path. The road, the road is narrow. But not everyone will enter. So as I looked at this daredevil's walk, at first he was fine for the first looked like the first 20 yards. I mean he was, but it wasn't until he hit the middle of that wire that he had to sit down. And it was like almost he had to reestablish himself to keep going. And I started thinking, you know what? This is like the narrow path that Jesus talks about. Heaven is on the other side of the Grand Canyon. I'm on this side. How do I get over there? So there are times when we have to sit down and reestablish ourselves. Amen. Look at our walk. We have been justified through, through faith. This same faith, this same grace that Jesus carried to the cross, it's the same grace in which we now stand. You know, like that guy on the rope, that was the only way he, you know, that was the way he saw getting over there. All of us try to find ways to get to the other side, to heaven by works by religious duties by not doing not any duties at all but no amount of work can get you into heaven that's why it says right here we have been justified through faith to be justified through faith I mean you know what it's justification. It's like we are now seen righteous. 
We are now seen righteous through God the Father because the blood of Jesus covers us. But a lot of people think that it's by works, it's by doing good deeds, it's by attending church every day, about giving money, about being a good person. Being a good person is not going to get you to heaven. It's accepting God as your personal Savior. It's through faith. It says so right here. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith. Amen. Justification is God's judicial act in where God declares the believing sinner righteousness. Righteous. He gives you the same righteousness of Jesus Christ. He gives you the same way he sees Jesus Christ. That's the way he sees you. And that's what we need to do is trust in Christ alone. Only. But if you look at, the, look at this, there was three quick points I want to make. And this is just Romans chapter 5 verse 1 through 2. There are three points that come out of this verse. God promises, look, we are promised peace with God. We are promised a new relationship with, with God. We were once his enemies, but now we are his friends. It says, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're now his friends. We were once his enemies. We're no longer his enemies. And now we have a place to plant our feet in which, in which we now stand. The places where Jesus ushers us into the presence of God. Jesus is, it's almost like walking into church, into a Catholic church or any church, and you have your ushers. But Jesus is going to be our usher, and he's going to usher us into the presence of the Father. And look at what else it's, it also is also gives us it says and we boast in the hope of the glory of God it gives us hope in the glory of God you know without hope you know how important hope is a lot of people who have committed suicide it's because they don't have any hope they've given up they've given up hope and you know to get to that point of not giving of not having hope if they would only just give the Lord a chance and know that, you know what, you have hope in the glory of God. You know, I preached this at the Salvation Army, and I'll say it again here. I think there's three major points when it comes down to a person's life. Three major life points, let me say. When you're born... Because now you're, breath you're breathing air. You're alive. God made you alive. God gave you heart, lungs to breathe, to pump blood through your system. And I think the second point is when you accept Christ as your Savior. Because now you're not only... Here to you're gonna eventually die, each and every one of us is gonna die, but you know you're gonna live forever and ever and ever. And I think that's point number two. You'll have everlasting life. Once you accept Christ. So point number one is when you're born. Point number two is when uh, you accept Christ as your savior. And number three, I think when the Lord puts it in your heart to know what your purpose in life is. That brings up a whole new hope, a whole new vision, a whole new goals, a whole new you. And you know what? You're just on fire for that passion of what the Lord has put it in your heart to do. You know, God did not send Jesus to die on the cross so that we can go to heaven. Although that is a glorious result or a glorious benefit of his death. But God sent his son to die on the cross in order that we may be delivered from sin, mm -hmm. saved from the punishment and penalty of sin, 
and be set free from the grip of sin. We are to become like Jesus in all his holiness because God is a holy God. So my brothers and sisters, it's time to change our focus. God made you a winner. A winner to travel a winner's path. Why would a winner want to follow a loser's path? That's only foolish. The battle has been won by the grace and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Which leads us on to point number three. We are set free from sin. Look at Romans chapter 6 verse 19 to 23. And my brothers and sisters, pay a close attention because there are some particular notes here, some particular points I would love for you to note. It says, I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to the righteousness leading to holiness changing your focus so when you were slaves to sin you were free from the control of righteousness listen to this verse 21 and see how many of us fall into this what benefit did you reap at the time from the things you are now ashamed of those things result in death but now you have been what set free from sin and have become slaves of God the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. How many of us, look at verse 21. I had to ask myself that question, and I had a lot of answers for that question too. <laughs> what benefit did you reap at the time from the things you are now ashamed of. Those things result in death. You know, the decisions that I made back then, there are a lot that I'm ashamed of. Yeah, I wish I could go back and change, but you know what? The Lord has given me the heart, has covered them, has forgiven me, and you know what? I just look forward I may fall down, but I'll pick that cross back up. I may have fallen down, but you know what? I still pick that cross back up and keep going forward. I don't look in the rearview mirror. I don't walk backwards. I'm just going to keep on going forward. But look at the benefits. The benefit you reap in being with Christ, in being set from sin, leads to holiness. And it tells you right here, it leads to holiness. Because when we become, we, we come before the Father, we're, we need to be see holiness and righteousness before His eyes. And that's through the blood of Christ. And the result is eternal life. Eternal life. That means our soul, our spirit's going to live with Christ. I was watching TV yesterday again and I always like watching Animal Planets National Geographic and here they had a snake it was a they had a cage and the cage had little holes in there well there was this about a five foot python that had gotten into had had squirmed through the little holes in the cage and there was some bait inside the cage so in order to trap it, this is what they did. They set some bait inside inside the, the little cage. It was a little round cage, sat down on the floor, and the python came in through the little hole, squeezed right on through, and ate that big pound of bait that they had in there. Well, now the snake is trying to get out. But now he can't because now he's fattened and he needs to digest that food. So now he's too big to fit through the gate to get out. 
And that what sins reminds that's what sin reminds me of. My personal illustration is that the snake represents sin. That's the way it comes in. It slithers in. But as soon as you see that head slither in, you need to cut it off. You need to cut off that sin. Sin leads to habits, death, and it starts small. Now listen to this. How does sin begin? Sin begins as a thought. Sin begins as a thought. The next consequence is you act upon it. Is action. The next one, after the action, you do it so much, it becomes a habit. After the habit, it becomes your character. People know you for what you do. And finally, that sin becomes your destiny. That's all you're going to live for. And that's going to lead to death. And that's the final stop. My brothers and sisters, I feel this is so important that I'm going to reiterate it again. Sin begins as a thought. The next consequence is an act. Goes into being a habit. It becomes your character. And finally your destiny, which leads to death. And it's kind of like that snake. When that snake peeks its head through, cut that snake's head off. And I'm just saying not a real snake. I'm talking sin representing, a snake representing sin. Because that's how sin works. You know, if you look at David, King David, and Bathsheba, you know what happened to him? And all of us here know the story. You know, if King David would have cut that thought off when he saw Bathsheba, look at all the problems he could have avoided. Look at all the sin that came in. That snake came in, and it, it would not go back. Remember, my brothers and sisters, the devil is here to steal, kill, and destroy you, and me, and the world. John chapter 10, verse 10 says, The thief does not come except to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life, and that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Brothers and sisters, I just want to ask you, whom will you serve? Who will be your master? Will sin be your master? Or the Lord? Knowing that you have been justified by faith, will you be committed to living a growing life in Jesus Christ? And I find this last question very important to ask each ourselves, ask yourself personally, am I willing to spend time with God in order to hear Him speak to me personally? Look at how much grace and mercy He has extended us and His love. Can you spend a little bit of time with Him? Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, that concludes today's word for today. Sermon entitled, Sin Shall No Longer Be Your Master. We want to thank you for joining us today at Abundant Grace Church. We want to lead you to know Christ. Amen. But you have to come to it first by faith and trust. I personally invite you to follow me in this prayer.
Romans 10 verse 9 says, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Father God, if you close your eyes, no matter where you're at, wherever you're hearing this message, just say, Father, I've tried it my way. There are a lot of things I've been ashamed of, Heavenly Father, in my past. I'm tired of doing it my way. Father God, I'm going to take the step right now and personally invite you to come into my life. Come into my life, Heavenly Father. Change me, Heavenly Father. Reveal yourself to me. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. I speak it. I declare it with my mouth, Heavenly Father, that you are my Savior. You are my Lord. Yes. I make you my Lord and Savior. Father God, I repent of my sins. I don't want sin to be my master. I want you to be my master, Heavenly Father. Father, you said I have been set from sin. And Heavenly Father, I see how sin leads to death. But Heavenly Father, if I die today, I just want to make sure that I'm going to be with you. So I say this prayer from the bottom of my heart, Heavenly Father, and I confess it with my mouth. That you are my master, my Lord, my Savior. My brothers and sisters, I felt if you led, if you followed me in that prayer, you have been saved. I invite you to get involved in a Bible-based church in your area. And we would love to hear from you. You can contact us via internet abundant.grace at att.net www.abundantgracechurch.net or www.abundantgraceofmidlothian.com Brothers and sisters, this has been the word of the Lord. God bless. Amen. Amen. Amen.